All right, now we're going to talk about some OpenGL data types. I'm sorry, some OpenGL shader data types. One thing to notice is that the overall syntax of OpenGL shaders are very similar to C and C++. And so uh, without much ado, let's get into it. With OpenGL shader data types, you have your usual suspects like floats, integer types, and boolean. Boolean data types can only have true and false. Integer values can have any whole number and floating types must have a decimal point in them so you can't have for example the number one because that's an integer versus 1.0 which is an actual floating value so that's something to keep in mind and then you have your for every types of um, data type there is a vector equivalent <clears throat> and so vector 2 3 and 4 that represents uh, a vector with this number of components like x, y, and z. And for the fourth one, it's going to be w. And so that's that. Also, you have matrices because if you have vectors, you must have matrices. Matrices are used to do advanced computations in mathematics to solve equations, blah, blah, blah. But that's just another subject for another day. And you also have samplers, and these are type of an artificial uh, representation of a uh, texture coordinate. Here you have <clears throat> one-dimensional texture, two and three D. So those are that. Um, as well as you can also create your own t data types inside of your shader program. And uh, so uh, an actual declaration of one is something like that and so recognize that this is very similar to C so there's not much of a learning curve there if you know C or C++ then you should already know and be comfortable with something like this moving on uh, there are also modifiers inside of uh, shader language much like you have constants and modifiers in C and C++ the same applies for shaders. For constants, these are initialized and never change throughout your shader program. And all these modifiers, for the most part, are declared globally, except for constants. It can be a parameter modifier, a local modifier. So, also, here's uh, some more modifiers available. Attributes are only available inside of vertex shaders, and they describe um, special components that are specific to a particular vertex. For example, the color, the location, and any other user-defined attributes that you create inside of your C++ program. So attributes are only available in shaders, and they change per vertex. So for every call to a vertex shader, the value inside of an attribute modified variable is different. Versus its friend over here, uniform modifiers. Uniform modifiers uh, are different because they remain constant throughout uh, primitives and throughout vertex um, shaders. And you can declare uniforms inside of vertex shaders and inside of fragment shaders. Um, so the most important thing to recognize is that uniform variables cannot be set or changed inside of um, in, in, in between calls of open OpenGL begin and OpenGL end. So that's something to keep in mind. And then you have varying, varying um, modifiers. This is basically a way for your vertex shaders to talk to your fragment shaders. And it provides for a way to interpolate uh, between um, values. Where this is useful is, um, for example, all your vertexes are uh, colored or changed but you want to actually modify some of those values for the entire for example if you have a 
uh, color per vertex um, red green and blue the final color will be an intermediate color between the three inside of your vertex shaders it's kind of weird but you'll find out as you watch some of my more tutorials all right so retrieve memory locations of a variable oh, okay now we're going to talk about how to communicate um, between shaders or be, I'm sorry how to communicate with your shader from your C++ program so you have your program you want to be able to talk to your shader and be able to manipulate your shader in such a way as to produce a desired effect in, on the screen how do we do this well inside of your C++ program you need to use your um, your your program object with either one of these two variables to retrieve the memory location of your um, shader variable that you want to modify. So what that means is we call either an attribute location or a uniform location to get either an attribute modified variable or a uniform modified variable. And to do that, you could just basically call these two variables with two things. The program object name and a string that represents that variable inside of your um, shader program. So once you've got that memory location, you can now modify that variable by calling GL vertex attributes or by modifying the uniform variable by calling GL uniform. And these two have a ton of permutations, so you need to call it with an actual permutation that you want to modify. You see what I mean by either Googling GL vertex attribute or GL uniform. And that's it. Thank you so much.